So Tom, uh, how, what do you? How's uh, how's the uh, the uh, energy audit blower door? What do you guys do? Uh, primarily, uh, the blower door is used to uh, certify a home energy star, which is an EPA program developed in the mid '90s. DOE says uh, EPA, you handle energy star. And DOE says we'll handle green building. So, like, who calls who calls you to do this? Uh, a builder. He wants to build. He wants to market his home as Energy Star, which theoretically means that the builder across the street, who's not doing Energy Star, sells his product much more slowly and for less money. Whereas the guy that's uh, gets a certified Energy Star, the uh, homeowner is more likely to pay more and uh, buy that product. And obviously, they they wanted. A house that's more energy efficient, because ultimately, that's what Energy Star is about: is efficiency. If you're uh, spending fifteen hundred dollars a year on heating, Energy Star could be as little as seven fifty. Really? Usually, it's in between seven fifty and the fifteen hundred, but it is far less than a home that's not built to the Energy Star standard. And like when you do the Energy Star uh, inspection, is, is, is it called Energy Star inspection? There's a lot of words, the audit, investigation, review, you can call it what, what, what do you want, but um, basically I get a set of plans and I review them and I say this will or will not meet energy star. If it does, we're good. If it doesn't, then I'll say, well, let's go to R49 in the attic and try that. Or go and to R49, R49 is, that's a R... Uh, that's like a, our insulation, how thick it is. Yeah, Energy Star consists of three components. The building envelope, which would be windows, doors, insulation. The mechanical systems, which would be uh, the furnace. And then the uh, tightness of the house, the infiltration. Mm -hmm. And and so you go, get into the house before they finish it? Like halfway through you look oh. at it? Yeah. Primarily, my job is to identify what they need to do to make it Energy Star. And then I have to train the superintendent on how to uh, put down two beads of uh, sealant, then set the wall up on top of it, and then caulk where the uh, bottom plate and the floor meet. And <coughs> any, anywhere two two <coughs> floors touch, you caulk that joint so you don't get air leakage through there. And uh, that's three inspections. The first one is before they do anything, I teach them what they need to do. And it takes about two or three ounces. Then um, they're going to insulate it. And I look at the insulation and the thermal bypass. Thermal bypass is how uh, heat gets around the structure and goes outside. Um, holes in walls, yep. cracks that aren't sealed, outlets. That, uh, that, outlets. That have drywall holes that are too mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. Attic accesses, things like that. Mm -hmm. Can lights, right? Light fixtures that are big too time. big. Yeah. Fireplaces. I see that the insulation isn't too long <coughs> because, you know, that's, or it's cut around the outlets rather than squeezed in behind because now the insulation comes like that. And um, if we have a thermal bypass, we uh, do advanced thermal bridge. That's not a bypass but the heat will flow straight through that. So you put an energy corner there, and now you've got insulation there, and you reduce that thermal bridge to its absolute minimum because structurally we do need... So you don't have like cold spots in walls is what your thermal bridge is something like if you touch this part of the wall, it's colder, that's thermal bridging because cold air is coming through. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it comes through the siding, the sheathing, the 2 by 4 and the drywall. That's a bridge. So you want to try to make the wall like a monolithic Right? You want to design it monolithic so you don't have that. We'd like to see an R5 rigid on the outside so there is no bridge at all anywhere. Right. And then once they put the drywall up, then you, you, then you do your other inspection? Yeah, when the uh, drywall, when, this, when we're ready to give Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so the keys to the house, then we do the final inspection. And that includes, uh, did they put the furnace in? They said they were going to the water heater programmable thermostat, the exhaust fans, fresh air, all that stuff is in. We, we certify that it's there. And the last thing we do is 
is the lower door test. And, and what that does is identify any um, leaks that happen to be there. For example, if I had a, a, a high-end house, you know, a couple of furnaces, big, and it wouldn't pass the blower door. And, and this is back in the old glass box window days. I had a two-inch gap. You could look right outside. And then in, in the end, the, the, what does the homeowner get out of a benefit? of an energy start besides the, the, the tax uh, breaks? Instead of a $1,500 a year heating bill, they're going to have an eight or nine hundred. And so over a long period of time, they, they get they save a lot of money. They reduce energy costs. They get a more comfortable structure because they don't have a cold wall that they're radiating to or a single glazing aluminum clad window. And it's quieter. Quieter? The acoustics, uh, really? it's amazing. It's amazing the difference in noise that you can hear through the wall of a fiberglass bat insulated wall and a cellulose, and of course the foam is beautiful. Now, you also, you told me earlier that you also do blower doors on older homes? Existing, yeah, the existing market is growing. And and like, and I know Jimmy here, he handles a lot of air, door, air quality work, mm -hmm. and so like when you go into a house and you're gonna do a blower door, you ever find issues where you have to call uh, an indoor air guy to, to maybe to help out the problem that you might discover in an older home? Not often, but when I do, I do not do a blower door because I'm going to contaminate the house from because we depressurize the house. We don't pressurize it. Uh, and the reason for that is if we pressurize it, it works the same way, but we'd have to have ladders outside to look at it and see where the leaks are. Where on the inside, you can just walk up the stairs and go up into the attic. And that's where you use your thermal camera? I use the thermal camera primarily to identify the air leaks because it sees the leakage. And I can tell if there's a stud space not insulated. Oh, and, 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 and in an older home you could probably find that. Oh, a lot of times. Now, now his, his house, in fact. <laughs> uh, he had his, uh, yeah. uh, you had it foamed. And he probably has about a 50% coverage rate. Really, fifty percent where it's got nice blue holes. Did, did you hire somebody to, to insulate you? You have an older house. Yeah, built in the forties. And so it's a it's a uh, balloon a balloon structure. That's where the the joist. I'm sorry, the the two by fours go straight up through the walls. Whereas a platform house, which is the newer homes, they have floor and they put the floor the right. next floor on top. These are the exterior walls are open all the way down, right? So what happened in your house? Well, we were told that there would be zero shrinkage when they foam the walls. They, these are the people that drill the holes right. on the outside right. and, and they pump in insulation. Right. And they guaranteed there'd be zero shrinkage. And there was shrinkage. And then I asked Tom to come down and shoot a blower door after the insulation. And it was amazing. <laughs> you could see it. So, so how much of it, what, did it shrink or they just forgot to put it in? I think it, there was shrinkage. Really? Yeah, that was the that was the trouble. That foam has inherently a shrinkage factor, but somehow the sales literature indicated that it didn't have a shrinkage factor, maybe one or two percent, and you could just add a zero on under that. So it sounds it, it sounds like now you didn't do Energy Star, you just wanted to insulate your house. Right. So it sounds like if you insulate your house, and when these people come to your home and they pump in insulation into your home, you may want to call Tom to check it. Oh, absolutely. That's too late. Tom, should, I should be there while they're insulating. I see. Because I can see when they got a problem. Say, hey, you got, uh. you missed this. And I see with the camera instantly. Uh, they all should do it that way. And you know that that doesn't happen, yeah. right? It's starting to, as they're getting smarter, and the, uh, the some are believers in closed cell phone, and some are believers in open. Right. You know, What's the difference between closed cell and open cell? The uh, open cell is like a sponge. The closed cell is like plate glass. So would a, clay, a closed cell might act as a vapor barrier? No, it you, does. Uh, a, a barrier is a pretty strong word, but a vapor retarder. Retarder. Yeah.